know them any of their own. You're in statistics. I'm a geographer there, and I lead the transportation team with national spatial data infrastructure. Um, some credibility stuff. I have a BS in geography, computer, master's in computer science. I work on a lot of PhD in public policy. Uh, some of my past work, probably the most important, is yard boy, warehouse front, construction gopher, plumber's assistant. That's a dirty job. Uh, don't recommend that one. Uh, bartender, bar back, all that kind of stuff. Some interest there. Uh, also, Coach senior sports, that's always fun to do. Uh, chatting today about creating public value with your spatial information. Uh, please, I'd love this to be a conversation. Raise your hand, let's chat, make a good talk, instead of me talking at you. Uh, so I'll introduce the geographic information value chain, uh, and then I'll apply that to the OpenStreetMap kind of foundation. Maybe we can uh, think about, think together about how we might increase the value of spatial information offered by OSN. So the geospatial information value chain, it's a framework that helps us consider, think about how we convert data uh, and information resources into uh, assets that have social and economic value. Uh, mm -hmm. The way to create information, uh, to create data and information products. So we want to understand here's our, here's what our, the data we have, how do we convert that into products? Uh, and then we want to use that, uh, take action to extract the maximum value from that geospatial information, if possible. And then we're transforming data into information and hopefully that information is knowledge. So uh, these are the actions, uh, cost avoidance, acquisition, harmonization, accessibility, interlinking, exploitation, and curation. Well, I'll go through these one by one. Uh, I'll go through them quickly because I want to have a chat at the end. So cost avoidance, um, have a plan, okay? I like to use this plan for when I consider what I'm doing with my data. Uh, it's a good framework. I know where I can, where I'm, it helps me to find weaknesses where I can increase value by identifying gaps in what I'm doing. Uh, check for existing data. If you want it, somebody else is most likely somebody always has it or wants it as well. Uh, if they don't have it, team up, work together. Uh, build a coalition and focus everybody's efforts towards uh, creating that data and that information that you, that you need and want. Uh, and share resources. OSN is really good about crowdsourcing. I know a bit about that. Uh, but share your costs, your labor, your technology, and ultimately the glory of all the work that you're doing. Uh, all of this is kind of a duh thing. Uh, we kind of feel like this is implicit knowledge, but kind of you know, listing all this stuff out helps us convert that implicit knowledge into explicit knowledge. Uh, so you know, when you're talking about acquisition, uh, creation is expensive, so avoid that cost if you can by collecting data. Uh, and if you must create data, then align that creation with industry best practices. Uh, consider standards. What are other people collecting? What is the content? So think about that. The harmonization. So there are over 108,000 cities in the U.S., 3,142 counties and 50 states, and they all insist on collecting their data and publishing it in a different form. Right? So if you have similar data and you want to have it work together, you have to convert that into format that. So uh, standardization addresses that conversion and formatting process. Uh, that standardization can is considered, I consider that conversion before creation, and it places the burden on the data provider. Uh, and then conversion is standardization after creation, and that places the burden on the data user. Uh, so it's a lot easier to make that conversion up front and then share the data than for everybody to collect that data and make that conversion. Uh, aggregation creates value by putting it all in one spot. Somebody has to do that work. Uh, that's one of the things that we do at BTS is aggregate data so that you guys don't have to. And then licensing, uh, declaring how your data can be used. And I'll get into licensing later. Uh, unused data has no value, right? If I have a bunch of data on my laptop, it's just sitting there, nobody's using it, no value at all. The more people that use your data, the more valuable it is. So accessibility is about increasing access to the data. Uh, you want to publish it. If you do publish it, make sure you can find it, people can use it. Uh, and then uh, make sure that uh, you're sharing it Sharing is easy. Uh, we do that by sharing, uh, by multiple paths to that data. 
So we provide services, we have downloads, uh, and different platforms as well. Uh, interlinking, finding connections between different data sets uh, and discovering, this helps us discover different uses, uh, discover uses for the data that is different than the intended original intent of the data. Uh, so uh, also uh, data integration, and that's how we, we create value by uh, putting data sets on top of each other and linking them, putting them together. And then those derivative data sets create value as well. Uh, then uh, that integration uh, enriches the information visually uh, and uh, contextually. What am I doing? Good? Yeah. Running through it too quick, so I slow down. Uh, visualization, uh, it just eases data interpretation, right? Uh, people say if a picture's, a picture's worth a thousand words, if a picture is worth a thousand words, a map is worth a million, right? So putting it all together really helps us understand. Uh, it's, it's easy manually to look at it and not rely on uh, AI is getting better, but you know it's really easy for the mind to comprehend stuff once it's visualized. Uh, analysis, uh, you know, inspecting the data to try and make it more uh, useful. Data mining, pattern identification, from analysis, all that kind of stuff. Uh, reasoning, that's what we're talking about identifying implicit knowledge and then converting that implicit knowledge into explicit knowledge. Uh, that's your ge geography, GIS. That's really great, great at that kind of stuff. And then interpretation, uh, just, you know, we and understand the information and then transform that information into knowledge. Uh, so this informs decision making and reduces uncertainty. Uh, curation. So, um, more, you want to make sure you're updating your data, make sure that's current, because uh, current data typically has more value than older data. Older data does have some value sometimes based on the, the use case, but we want to clean and repair the data as often as you can. Uh, you know, nobody likes dirty data. You, gross. Uh, we want to remove inconsistencies, uh, correct inaccuracies, and uh, formatting errors. Make sure that all the dates are in the same format, things like that. Um, I'm a big metadata proponent. It's as important as the data. Uh, it fosters discovery and increases user confidence, right? People want to know where that, that data came from, how it got there, who the contributors are, how it's maintained, when was it last published. Uh, and then uh, we want to make sure we're archiving the data. Like we talked about, you know, current data is more valuable than older data, but if you don't have the archived data, you can't compare past states to the current state. So finding ways to archive that data so you can get kind of analysis. All right. So taking the GIVC and you got 10 minutes there. Okay, great. On tap, perfect. Um, find the GIVC to the OSM. Okay, and I'm not super familiar with OSM. I'm not the very, I'm not the expert like Brian is here, uh, but he's here to correct me if I'm wrong. So uh, OSM is not the world the labor market for computer spatial data. You guys have interest in more protection and do that through your license. Um, my issue sometimes, my issue is that it's a blanket policy. And it ignores diverse and unique circumstances. So I would like you guys to consider maybe a tiered licensing agreement. Uh, so that the less, the more risky it is, maybe the more restrictive the license is, the less risky it is, the less restrictive the license is. Um, and I know this is wrapped up in, uh, you got OSC in the US and OSC in Europe and all that kind of stuff. I'm not me with all the politics of all this. So this may be much easier on paper than it is to actually implement, but uh, something to consider. Uh, am I wrong? Um, so you guys offer a base map, but not individual layers as services. Is that correct? My liar. Yeah. Okay. We offer geospatial data. We don't even offer a map. It does. Mm, no, there's a map out there, but that focus geospatial. Just the, the data make sure. And it's up to you as a user to that. Okay. Um, I find that hard to do. Like I can't extract, if I want to use a road layer or a bridge layer, I have to go into OSN, I have to extract that data. I have to download it in my GS and then I can use it. But it would be easier for me to access that data and use that data if I could just point to a service, like a map service or feature service. So that just increases access, right? Are we on time? Okay.
three minutes of time. I'll run through these. Uh, discovery. Um, I know you guys have a ton of data, but it's hard to figure out what's in there and how to get it out. So, you know, maybe a catalog. Um, I go to OSM catalog, say, oh, here's the list of all the data. I click a button, it takes me there or extracts it for me right away, right? So I'm just making that access easier through a discovery portal or something like that. Um, I know you guys do routing and people use that routing for, I know he, I think here uses it, uh, Google, no? Third party thing? Okay. Um, maybe provide services, you no know, spatial analysis, proximity stuff, density, um, you know, provide those tools that allow people to exploit the information that they have. Analytics, you know. And then uh, archiving. Um, you guys have a ton of data, people updating all the time. What is the past state of that data? What was it 10 years ago? What was it five years ago? How do we capture the group? I mean, error to the current state. So just some ideas there to, to throw out. Um, some sources there, GeoValue is a great book. I've read it multiple times, uh, relied heavily on that for this presentation. Uh, the National Resource Council licensing geographic data is old, but it's still pretty relevant in, uh, in uh, a lot of spaces. Uh, it's, it's kind of cool to compare what the geospatial industry was in 2014. So that's kind of where I am. All right, that's my spiel.